I'm excited to have everyone here. Also, I'm excited to have everyone virtually as well too. So I'd like to introduce to um, everyone here and in person also virtually. Um, Tom, you wanna come here? Yeah, yeah you bet, you bet. Tom, you... Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll pop on up. Let's yeah. um, so introduce these two gentlemen, Tom Gilsharp and Tom, um, tell us a little bit about yeah. yourself. And, and Yeah, uh, first of all, thanks to Todd and Mike and the whole team for having us out here, uh, recognize some familiar faces and names on the screen and, and uh, really appreciate the opportunity to come talk to you guys today. And nice work on adaptability there, by the way. <laughs> That's um, pretty fast. Yeah. So uh, I am the regional sales manager for Medica. Uh, I've been at Medica about eight months. Prior to that, uh, 25 years with Mutual of Omaha and Blue Cross Blue Shield Nebraska, really focusing on the Medicare space. A lot of it's on the product and market development side. Um, and you know, one of the things I, I love about uh, Medica, it's a uh, regional, small but very growing company. It's a nonprofit. Uh, you know, a lot of times we have to sit down and, and talk to our clients and prospects about who Medica is and why Medica. Why would you want to trust your your clients <laughs> with Medica? Who are it versus a United Healthcare, or Blue Cross, or Netna? Uh, you know, somebody that you may have heard about. But it's a nonprofit. Uh, they were formed about 50 years ago in, in Minnesota. Five years ago, they were in uh, four or five states. They're now in 12 states and growing. Uh, one and a half million members. <laughs> the largest Medicare cost plan in the country with 100,000 lives. They're about $5 billion in revenue. So might not have heard of them, but they're, they're small but mighty. And, and it's as a regional plan, they're continuing to grow uh, we have a very, very strong footprint in the Midwest. Uh, we have a regional office in Omaha where we've got about 15 folks, including uh, Justin, who we're very glad to bring on board. Uh, Nebraska for, is a very uh, important state for us. We're in the individual health space. We're in the Medicare space with both cost, Medicare Advantage, and Medicare Supplement Plan. So we've got is broad a Medicare portfolio as I think you'll find. We're also in the group space. We're also in the Medicaid space. So we are uh, uh, kind of a, a multi-purpose nonprofit carrier that's continuing to grow. So uh, we take our partnerships very seriously. And uh, we wanna talk to you guys today about some, uh, uh, some opportunities or things we think are opportunities to hopefully add to your portfolio. Right add some value uh, for your clients and some things you may not be aware of. And uh, a lot of times, you know, you're not going to become an expert on things, you know, in one fell swoop, but we want to introduce some of this stuff to you, hopefully answer your questions, give you some more options. And I'm going to stop selling this. It kind of sells itself, but I wanted to tell you a little bit about Medica first. And uh, one of the individuals I've had the pleasure of partnering with over the last five or six years that I was just able to bring over uh, to, to Medica uh, to help with this effort is Justin Leafley. He, he's our sales relationship manager. Um, spent a lot of time, uh, a lot of customer facing, a lot of broker facing. He is our resource uh, for you guys to help uh, grow your business, learn about our Medicare portfolio, answer your questions. Again, we're based in, in Omaha, uh, out of our Omaha office. And so if you have questions, hopefully we'll be able to answer them today. If not, uh, we're, we're local. So with that, again, thanks to Todd and, uh, and Mike. And we'll pro do we want to get started or do we want to? Yeah, well, so it's, kind of, um, it's kind of juggling here with people virtually because I want to respect their time and also people here too. Yeah. So why don't we, if we can kind of just maybe start and then maybe just take the back row and just go get yours. And then once um, they get theirs and kind of just filter on up so we can keep going and... Uh, uh, but yeah, the back row, uh, Eric, Chuck, if you want to grab something, and then, uh, and Brian, and then once you get yours, then we'll do Nick and Roger and, and everyone and work our way up. So, uh, but yeah, if you want to yeah. introduce Justin, we'll yeah. get started then too. So Justin, I see, I know some uh, some familiar uh, uh, names anyway, faces, Tom Miller, nice to meet you at least virtually. Um, and then Chad, I don't know that we've had a, a chance to meet, but uh, have heard quite a bit about you. Um, with that, 
Uh, Justin, are you you ready to go? Yeah. All right. Just got the clicker figured out. So we're ready. Take it away. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, everybody. Uh, hey, Justin, make sure that that microphone's kind of close. So that yeah. Can, uh, but yeah. 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 Slide this right here toward yeah. me a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> You're like get this thing away from me anyway, right? Can you all hear me okay? Yeah. Guys on the on the call on the Zoom call or uh, team. Yeah. Everybody hear me all right? Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Um, so yeah, thanks for your time, everybody. Uh, happy to be here with you. This is my favorite part of what we get to do. Um, I've been in this industry about 14 years, and I love working with brokers. I love getting to support you, help you grow your business. It's a lot of fun for me. It's kind of a mutually beneficial thing. You're successful. I'm successful. We're successful together. It's a win-win. Your clients are with a good product. They feel really good about it. All these types of things. So happy to be here with you today. Um, we're going to talk about the Medica offerings, what we have to bring to the table for you when it comes to our Medicare products. As Tom had kind of alluded to earlier, we have three really great Medicare products through Medica. We have an extremely competitive uh, Medicare Advantage offering in the Omaha and Lincoln markets, eight counties in Nebraska that we'll get into. Outside of those eight counties, we have a really uh, strong Medicare cost offering in parts of central Nebraska. We're in 57 counties right now with a Medicare cost plan. So I know everyone's familiarity with cost plans is going to be a little different in the room, but we'll try to go through and do our best today to explain to you how that works. And we have some exciting changes coming on Medicare supplements. So Medica does also have a Medicare supplement offering as well. So we're going to start things off uh, with just kind of some, some questions and some background. Um, you know, for those of you, I know a lot of you here, are, you're all focused within the Medicare space and taking care of your clients, keeping them uh, with you as agents. And I know that you all do a really good job at that. We just want to talk about some additional options that may be something that's a better fit for some of them. And also you as the agent is the, is the right thing for your client to do as well. So, um, you know, are you interested in a solution that you can offer year round that isn't just during AEP that doesn't have underwriting? You know, there is an opportunity with the cost plan. You can write that cost plan year round. There is no underwriting for that. We'll get into the specifics of that a little bit more later. This will allow you to do things like free up dollars for your clients so you can provide additional financial protection. Um, money, talk about money. Money's a big part of the equation, right? In a Medicare cost world, the commission and the payment is very similar to Medicare Advantage. So it may be a more lucrative opportunity for an agent than like what Medicare self the commission looks like, for example. So an opportunity there as well. And Justin, maybe just a quick survey of the group and the folks on the yeah. phone. We talked a little bit about Medica and trying to get comfortable with with us, how many of you have written a Met Medica policy, Medicare policy? Uh, so quite a few hands. Oh, how, uh, cost, cost plan. Uh, how about a Medicare Advantage plan? Nobody on Medicare Advantage. How about a Medicare Supplement plan? What's that? You quote it. Well, keep that in mind because those rates yeah. are going to get better. So I think there's an announcement that just came out. So yep. uh, that helps. It, Kind of get an idea of, of your experience with, with Medica so far. So yeah, thanks, Tom. All right. Um, any other questions from anybody as we kind of get further into this right now, or you just want me to kind of go in there and have lunch and okay, just add, make sure you ask me questions as we go through. We can kind of keep this informal, and I want to make sure that we're here to get you the questions answered. Okay? So, <clears throat> um, looking at, at a Medicare supplement premium versus a cost. This is an example that we put the Tom and I put together here. So really understanding your client's premium increase dilemma. Medicare supplements have been around for a long time in Nebraska. They're still the main type of Medicare product that folks in Nebraska are enrolled on. So uh, we know that they're great. They provide a lot of peace of mind for clients. They work well with Medicare. Providers in our state of Nebraska are pretty friendly with how a Medicare supplement plan operates from a pre-cert and a pre-authorization uh, pre standpoint and those kind of things. So that's all, that's all fine and good. But as a lot of us know, with the Medicare supplement plan, those rates are probably going to go up every year. So on a plan G, which I would say right now, plan G is probably the most popular, you know, Medicare supplement plan that's out there. It's a very, very solid plan. <laughs> Medicare, uh, first year competitive med sup, about a hundred bucks a month, I would say, uh, for a competitive company's Medicare supplement plan G. The annual trend increases over the next 10 years on that, let's say that that's 7%. Uh, your client's now paying about $198 a month for what they were paying about, you know, 10 years ago, $100 a month for it. So there's a there's a, a premium increase to be aware of there. And it becomes a little bit steeper uh, with Plan F. Plan F for a competitive company is about $125 a month uh, for that year one premium. 
for PlanF. Um, we figured about 9% is the increase on that for over the next 10 years. So looking at that, now your client's premium 10 years later, when they're, let's say, 75 instead of 65, is about $296 a month. So what if we had an option where five or 10 years down the road, those premiums have gone up, you know, we could save your Plan G clients $876 a year in premium. We could save your Plan F clients $2,052 a year in premium. We could save your clients money and potentially also put more money in your pocket simultaneously. And that's really where the cost plan uh, comes into play. And this is this is something when I started at Medica, we talked a lot about this. So what's happening with most of your med stuff clients? Most of you guys have the big books of med stuff business. What are they getting? They're getting love letters, right? And we really like your business, but we just need you to pay a little bit more, right? Um, that's not uncommon. Every carrier does that, and they tend to do that now. First quarter, second quarter, <laughs> stay away from the Medicare open enrollment period uh, immediately. So I, we talked about this for the, and I think, Mike, when we were down doing your thing down at Embassy, we talked about this, but as a solution for your clients that want an option that like comprehensive coverage, uh, but the rates are just getting a little high. Um, and they, be, they can't pass underwriting to go to somebody else, the cheaper plan G or, you know. Uh, so we, you can plug in whatever percentages you want. You guys know your books of business, the carriers you have, the average rate increase is better than we do. We just wanted to plug in an example. You can plug in 7%, 5%, 9%. Um, but the main thing is there is an option that can save them some money, some a lot more than others. And if they're coming off of med stuff, you know, they don't have those built-in ancillary benefits, which Justin will talk about. This, if this is something that you can really uh, add to your portfolio, talk to your clients about uh, before they hear about it from, from somebody else and really offer them an option that frankly in, in Nebraska and a lot of states in the Midwest, what wasn't available three years ago. See, I'm gonna swap Go screen. So looking at the different parts of, uh, of Medicare here, we have, you know, of course, original Medicare, uh, you know, Part A, Part B. Then we have our traditional Medicare supplement, our Medigap coverage with the MedSup picking up and, and leaving on the table what the red, white, and blue card isn't paying for. Uh, Medicare Advantage plan, you know, Tom and Astro earlier, I know some of you in here are working with Medicare Advantage plans today. We've seen that come into our state, um, you know, with a lot of, uh, call it, uh, Aggression recently, we've seen we've seen Medicare Advantage plans become something that people in Nebraska are talking about a lot more than they were five or ten years ago. So that's definitely, of course, something to be aware of. Those Medicare Advantage plans plans do include Part D as well, all those MAPD plans. Uh, Medicare cost plans. We have four different Medicare cost plans that I'll get into today. Uh, none of those plans include Part D, so separate standalone Part D with the cost plan, very similar to a med sub for that. Anything you would add? Yeah, so I think that's an important point. Um, we, our goal is to offer a competitive Medicare portfolio. I, we're, we're not promoting one plan over the other, but our, you know, we have a competitive med sub, a competitive cost in the service area where it's at, and a very competitive Medicare Advantage plan. Our goal is to educate you on that and have you make, you know, help your clients make the right choice, whatever, whatever it is. But the nice thing is we get into the cost plan is that it's very much like a, it's a med sub, it's, it's medic, Medicare or medical only. So if you, what happens with the Medicare Advantage plan, if, you, if your client makes the decision to move say from a med sub to a Medicare Advantage or as they age in, uh, their medical and their drugs tied together, right? And so can be very competitive on the medical side, maybe very competitive on the drug side. What happens if that drug, the formulary changes? If the drug copay changes? If the drug deductible changes, those two plans are tied together. So you have to either live with it or shop somewhere else. The nice thing about the cost plan is it provides comprehensive Medicare A and B health medical coverage. And if they're, they have a med sub plan or a part D plan that they really like, um, they keep it. They don't have to change it. You don't have to touch it. And if their drug, drugs change, you just go through the normal review process and update their standalone Part D, but the, their uh, medical coverage stays the same. So having those two separate provides your client with flexibility 
so that they can maximize their benefits. And as their drug change, uh, uh, drug needs change or their medical needs change, you're, you've got some flexibility there. Yeah, and that, that really backs up to the fact that the cost plans don't have an enrollment time frame, and you can you can write them year round. One of the four that we offer does have kind of a kind of a special enrollment period, but three of the four of them uh, don't. So we'll we'll get into that here in just a second. Um, but no underwriting. Cost plans do ask about ESRD, uh, end stage renal disease, but other than that, there isn't any underwriting that's involved in that. So they this time of year, that's why we want to talk to y'all today. If there's somebody out there that you have that's experiencing a med sub rate increase that is uncomfortable to them, there's a solution that a lot of folks are, are taking a look at now uh, in our state. Um, let's talk about money. <laughs> it's funny. You know, we like doing what we do. At the end of the day, money matters. It's important. And um, one of the things that I would like if I were an agent on, on your side of the equation is I'd like to know that uh, I could potentially make some additional money, put my clients on an option that's a good fit, but also make some additional money with the cost plan commission. The cost plan commissions feel very similar to how MA commissions work. So uh, in certain situations, they can be more lucrative for you than how Medicare supplement commission pays. Put an example together for you to speak to that a little bit. So med sub commissions, um, some of y'all are gonna be you know, familiar with this, but after basically seven, usually six, seven years, those Medicare supplement commissions start to come down. So uh, year one through six commission is used about 20%. So let's say it's about $240 for a plan G, about $300 annually for plan F, med sub commission. Year seven and beyond, that would go down to 5%. So now it's about $60 annually for plan G and about $75 uh, annually for plan F. Medicare cost commissions, uh, they're higher, they can be written year round. So about 573 uh, for that initial year commission on a Medicare cost plan and $287 renewal commission year two and beyond when you, when you write the cost plan. So uh, I think this example speaks pretty well to that. Some of you may even be in this exact scenario, but if you have 25 uh, MedSup clients, move 25 of those over to a cost plan. So no new business, you just basically renewed and changed your existing clients base, 25 of those folks. Uh, Say you've taken 25 Plan G members, that's about $1,500 annual renewal commissions. You convert those same folks, those same 25 folks, over to a cost plan. And can we, uh, can we minimize this? Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. So if you just take those 25 Plan G members and put them over to a cost plan, give yourself a $12,825 first year raise which maybe those 25 folks, it's a better fit for them to be on that cost plan anyway. I think it makes a lot of sense. What's it look like year two and beyond? It becomes 5,700, excuse me, $5,675 in an annual commission increase there. So pretty, pretty good opportunity, I feel like, from a financial perspective. And hopefully you'll see too why it would make sense benefits-wise, network-wise, travel-wise, and cost-wise to, to, for, for these folks to look at a cost plan as well. Kind of back to the earlier point. So, what do your clients do with your book of business when they get that rate increase letter? You have a couple options. You can tell them, well, you can pay the premium and stick with it. We can see if there's another carrier out there that maybe will take you based on your current health condition, which there's no guarantees. Or, depending on where you're at, maybe, you know, let's see if who your doctor is and maybe Medicare Advantage would be right for you, right? And, uh, Maybe Medicare Advantage isn't something they want. And maybe those folks can't pass medical underwriting to go to the cheaper plan G. Those are your options or, or stick with what you got, right? And call me next year when you get your letter. Not anymore. doesn't matter what your health condition is. We can save you money. You can get ancillary benefits. And it's closer to fee-for-service Medicare because mm -hmm. you keep your red, white, blue card. So you now have a solution. It may not be right for all, you know, all your clients, but it's, a solution that you don't have today that you can have tomorrow for those clients. So that's, that's really one of the things we want to make sure uh, we're relaying is that this is a, a new opportunity to provide some, hopefully some value for you guys. Yeah. Our cost plans that we're going to be offered in the Lincoln Good, 
Good question. So the question was, are cost plans ever going to be offered in Lincoln and Omaha? Um, from a Medica standpoint, these are uh, these are Medicare. We file a contract with Medicare. They're a Medicare contracted plan. Uh, we submit a bid, uh, and as part of that arrangement uh, with CMS, we either can have a cost plan uh, contract in a county or a Medicare Advantage plan contract in a county, not both. So where we feel the greatest value is, we, we'd love to have costs everywhere in every county, uh, but where we have to choose, uh, we have Medicare Advantage in the Omaha Lincoln Metro, which Justin will talk about. Um, and that that's, there's a lot of, we feel a lot of opportunity there. Um, there's a lot of other Medicare Advantage plans as well. Um, so where we see the biggest value is right outside those metropolitan areas where they're a little bit more rural, where you have a little less prevalence of Medicare Advantage. Um, so that's, to answer your question from a Medica standpoint, not in the, the near term uh, because we have Medicare Advantage. So it's either gonna be an MA county for us or a cost county, but we are looking to continue to expand costs. There was a question earlier across more of Nebraska, more of Iowa, more of Kansas uh, as well. So when you say some counties can be advantage or cost, that's a statute thing? Yeah, from a CMS standpoint, yes. They say you, you, can, you, you can't have, we can't have both products in a county, correct? Yeah, so. Okay, that answers yeah. a lot. Yeah. So you're not able. Correct. And, yeah. and so all the companies that are writing, anybody that's writing cost and advantage like Medicare, yeah. We're, they're all choosing the county which yes. most yeah. profitable. Yeah, they, whatever their business justification is. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we're, uh, but we are looking to grow costs. You know, uh, it's not going to be in Omaha or Lincoln, but it's going to be in Western Nebraska and more counties in Kansas. And even and just right, and really though too, really we'll show you in a moment. Just right outside of Lancaster County. Yeah. Too, yeah. There's there's some opportunity. And this this is a powerful. I, Slide. When I started at Medica, this is, and I think we showed this at the Senior Insurance Marketing Symposium. This to me is a, you, you look at where uh, we all know, you know, Medicare Advantage is continuing to grow. Uh, about half of Medicare enrollees in this country are on Medicare Advantage. But you can see where they're at, right? Look at the heartland of, of the country. The Midwest is still predominantly med sub. And so those are folks that are paying their monthly premium, getting their rate adjustment notices. And this is really mirrors the footprint of our, of our cost plans. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, I came on to Medica in December. So I've been here a few months, but that was something that I was really excited about my conversations with Tom is that there's a lot of opportunity for us to, to grow a lot of things together. And I'm here to support you and help you with that. That's truly my entire role for Medica. So I take that real seriously and I want to be, a good partner for, for all of you and help them grow that where, where we can. What are you seeing from the provider and healthcare system pushback? Good, good question. So, um, question was provider and health system pushback. Uh, so we're I, I get involved with some of the network contracting, uh, and Justin will probably get into this, but uh, so typically providers, whether it's a uh, a facility or a, a clinic. Um, from a from a coverage standpoint, Medicare traditional Medicare fee for service is easy. That's your red, white, and blue card. You submit that. There's no questions. They know what they're going to get paid. There's no pre certification, no pre authorization, no hassles. So when somebody comes in with their red, white, and blue card and their Med Sup card, that's easy, right? They're they've got their they, they file with Medicare. Everything gets filed with Medicare. It's easy. They know that when they show up with a Medicare Advantage card, that members assign their Medicare benefits over to the private insurance carrier. So now that provider clinic is working with that carrier to submit claims. There might be a pre-authorization, a pre-certification. So they're now going from working and submitting to the Medicare fee-for-service program to a private carrier. So. Sometimes that works really, really well. You know, the hope is we're, we're a carrier. We have Medicare Advantage. Our goal is to make providers happy. Because if providers are not happy, um, they talk to their clients about that. And, you know, they understand 
if their provider has an easy time submitting claims, getting claims paid. Uh, so that to me, that is one of the biggest differences between the fee for service, you, your clients that walk in, you, you know, that have a med sub card, there's no claims problems. There's no, you know, there's no issues submitting claims. Medicare Advantage is on the other spectrum because you're now dealing with a private carrier submitting claims to a private carrier that you may have to call to get that service pre-authorized, right? So your question, I think, that you haven't asked yet is, so how does cost fit into that, right? So with cost plans, the member, this is key, the member keeps their red, white, blue card. And they get a card from us with Medica that says you also have a cost plan. Medicare remains primary for part A. So you go to the hospital uh, in Kearney, wherever it is, they submit the claims to Medicare. It works like Medicare. There's no pre-authorization. There's no pre-certification because Medicare is primary. So there, most providers, when we sit down and talk to them, they'll see that there are less barriers uh, or no barriers that they typically would see with a Medicare Advantage plan around pre author pre -cert. So the A claim, the facility claim goes to Medicare and then the B claim comes to us. So that was kind of a long-winded answer because it takes some education with our providers to say, just continue to pay the, submit the Part A claims to Medicare. Uh, but again, to, to, the short answer is it goes very well because they do not have, they do not see the issues and maybe the administrative burden and the checking that they need to do if they're dealing with a, a Medicare Advantage carrier, because we don't have the pre off, we divert, we uh, default to Medicare on all that. So, did that answer? But do they your still question? need to carry the B plan on Medicare? Got to pay that B premium. They still have everybody. to pay it for no matter what. Yes, they still need to pay their Medicare Part B premium, just yeah. like they would with a Medicare Advantage plan. Yep. A lot of the hospitals, a lot of the counties now are having a hospital, and the clinics are owned by the hospital. Yeah, we see that a lot. Yeah. So the doctors that provide services in St. Ed, they're tied to the hospital in Albion. Uh, how is that? We'll, we'll, we'll talk. We'll, the network piece is, is a key component. So we'll, we'll hold on to that question. When we get there, we'll, we'll talk through that. All right. I'm going to see if there's a question in the yeah. chat. Okay. <laughs> If you want to read it. Yeah, sure. So question in the chat. Uh, on Part B services, do you divert to Medicare or just Part A? I just want to make sure I understand that Part B coverages will be very similar or the same to Medicare's coverage. So we've got a benefit chart coming up. Yep. We've got a network chart. So the short answer is for B services in, in network, they're going to file with us. But I think the other question is, how do how does the coverage work? We we've got a chart that lays that all out. Yeah, there. yeah. So yeah, appreciate appreciate the question in the chat there. We'll we'll uh, we'll come back right back around to it. So what we're looking at here is our service area for where we offer cost plans, where we had them in 2021, and then where we expanded to in 2022. So uh, 57 counties in Nebraska for that. We're in, in Kansas as well, Iowa as well, Minnesota. Um, North and South Dakota, and then we went into Wyoming for the first time in a couple of counties for 2022. So it's kind of hard to see because of these colors. Sorry about that. But this kind of light, I guess, kind of salmon or pink color, this kind of light yellow color, that's where we went into for 2022. So it's a little bit hard to see, but essentially we went into Wyoming, new into Iowa, added a few more counties in Kansas, and a couple of counties in Oklahoma and Missouri for the first time. So we are when we go into a new area, we're looking at places where we identify a pretty big opportunity, uh, places where we think that there are folks that it's going to be a high Medicare supplement penetration, maybe not a, quite as many Medicare Advantage plans. So kind of more focused on lesser populated, more rural areas, you might say. But still a lot of opportunities as we look throughout the region here. Uh, we get asked a lot. We got asked when we first came here today about what our expansion plans look like for Nebraska. So hopefully we could talk to that pretty soon for 2023. But Nebraska, from Medica's perspective, they're you know, a company that's headquartered in Minnetonka, Minnesota. But they're, Nebraska, when it comes to cost plans, is very, very important to them. 
And um, so our leadership team that I report to Tom, but the folks that Tom reports to, they're very uh, curious about always asking us about what's happening in the Nebraska market. How can we grow and expand cost plants here in Nebraska? So it's definitely something that's on top of their mind. So we, we're excited to continue to work with everybody on that. <coughs> Here's our 57 counties for 2022. So we'll get into the benefits on these, but there's four different Medica, Medica, Medicare cost plans, standard thrift core and premier. So all four of those plans are available in all 57 counties that we offer them. So um, any questions about, about the counties that we're at today? Yeah. All right. I don't know where to fit this in. Okay. Some of those counties that are on that list are in network and some of them are kind of in network. So as far as the facilities- So Lane County, I'm gonna tell you, that's mm -hmm. just, just to the left of Lancaster. Yeah, yep. So Lane County, there's something quirky about that. I've got, I wrote a half a dozen out in, cause that's where I work is Gage, Jefferson, Celine. that I get into Lancaster a little bit. Yeah. People that live in Gage County and doctor in Saline County, it works. Okay. People that live in doctor in Gage County, uh -huh. it works. People that live in Saline County and doctor in Lancaster County, and I know the county line's got something to do with it. If they live in Saline, if they live in Crete and go to the yeah. specialist in Lincoln, it works. Yeah. But if you live in Crete and go to the Crete Hospital, there's something quirky about that hospital. And I know that. Blue Cross and when Brian Memorial's out there building stuff, there's something quirky about Saline County. And, and so you're talking about specifically cost members going to the Crete Area Medical Center. Right. If they live in Crete and go to that clinic and that hospital, yeah. there's something that kind of gets thrown out of network and I don't know how it happens. But if, because I, my hairdresser lives in Gage County by a foot, but she's in Gage County. Yeah. And she doctors in Wilbur and psh, just like supplement, everything's covered. Uh -huh. yeah. I got a family that lives in Crete and they do all their doctrine in Lincoln. Yeah. Covered. Perfect. Everything works. Uh -huh. But the guy that lives in Crete that goes to Crete Hospital for a $100,000 heart equation, <clears throat> he's all of a sudden got a 4000 out of pocket. But the brochure says three and I'm, I just get confused. And I can't answer the question yeah. how that happens. And I I don't know if this is the right time to answer that question when you have no, the counties it's, listed or, yeah, or maybe you've got a chart coming up. So I, I, I'd i like to learn a little bit more about your particular case. It's actually, I got these people in three different counties yeah. and it depends where they doctor. Mm -hmm. if, they're, if they're across the county line, I'm yeah. telling you, you cross the county line and it's beautiful. But if you but there's something quirky about Saline County. Well, Crete area. So the first thing is that, um, and we can talk more too about it offline. All right, because I want to help you definitely. It's okay. But skip it. No, it's okay. I'm just thinking because right off the top of my head, though, Crete area is contracted with us on costs for sure. I know that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, let's let's move on. Yeah. Right, I'm sorry. No, that's so okay. it, be it, sorry. it, it oh, might be a, a filing issue and that's why sometimes when this kind of stuff happens we come across an opportunity to connect with our because i don't provide our team and there's like a claim filing issue that's happening it shouldn't be or that kind of thing so i write in gage county and jefferson county and yeah it, and seward county uh -huh. and it works great and it all works great this is because it, it says something in the if you go across the county line yeah help me there's something about yeah but, i don't care where it, you can write it out there in sydney yeah and go to yeah. North Platte that's not in, and if you cross the county line, by golly, it's covered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll get into it a little bit more with some of the network stuff that I have, but I want to talk to you one on one. It works. That's how it's supposed to work, and it should also work for your client in Crete. So that's that's why I will, I, I want to learn so a little yeah, bit more about that. Yeah, the first thing that's jumping in my head is maybe there's just an opportunity for us to talk to the billing folks at Crete. And see if there's a <laughs> issue going on or something like that. But. I well, if they're in Shadron, you buy it in Shadron, yeah, mm -hmm. and then go in Valentine to the doctor, okay. which is in the white. Mm -hmm. Yep, it'll be covered because yep. you bought it in the right county, and we're gonna pay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you cross that county line. I don't. It just yeah, works. It will. It it should work all the time. 
So we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we will get to the network piece, of okay. which we'll, we'll talk about. Slides that. To yeah. the, all the expanded county sure. right there. Sure. I've got somebody that's yeah. interested in several states. Yeah, absolutely. Thank yeah. you very much. Yep. Yeah. Sure thing. Is Colorado not on there? We are not in Colorado, um, but this this map this map might grow come this fall too. So there might be yeah. not just more counties in current states. There might be another state <clears throat> too that we add. So let's get to the net net. Where Mike's got his picture. Let's get to the the okay. kind of. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go forward here a little bit just so we can can talk about the the network here. Um, so just since that's top top mind followers so the network on a medicare cost plan yeah it kind of works like this so if you're in one of those 57 counties that we offer the cost plans see a network doctor provider facility you'll pay the in-network benefits i'll show you what those co-pays and what that out-of-pocket looks like in just a sec so but if you're in the service area 57 counties and you see a network doctor pretty straightforward you pay the network benefits if you're outside of the service area so just like what we're talking about right now if you are a resident of Saline County and you live in Crete, Nebraska, and you need to come to Ryan and Lincoln on the Cotton over there, you have to do that. You live in Saline County. You live in the Medicare cost service area. You have to come to Lancaster County for a medical procedure. You are technically outside of the Medicare cost service area. However, if you're out of the service area, if that provider accepts Medicare, which Bryan Hospital would here in Lincoln and Lancaster County, you would pay the same in network benefits. It works. It absolutely yeah. works. So yeah, we'll have to dig more into that, that situation because it should work in the same county as well too. So if you're, it should work key, in, in pre. Yeah, the, the, the key is, you know, you, you, you can write a member if, if they live in, our, in the cost service area. And when they do, if they, Whoever their local doctor or hospital is within the service area, just look them up to make sure they're in network. If they see a specialist, local primary, or the local <clears throat> county hospital, that just make sure they're in network. Because if they see them in the service area, they, they just need to be in network. But if they travel, you know, Omaha, Lincoln, cancer treatment, if you know if they live out in central Nebraska and they're coming in, or you know, they're they're gonna go down south. You go as soon as you step outside of that map. Medicare allows us to then cover out of the service area at all in network rates. Yeah, it works. So across that county line, it works great. So the then the, the question is if if the doctor's in and the hospital's in and if they travel and they go out, it's in. What if the specialist in their service areas uh, not in network and they go see them? Then the key there is remember they keep original Medicare A and B. It would be considered out of network, but original Medicare A and B would apply. I got family in Crete that snow, snowbirds in Fort Isabel, Texas, throw a rock at Mexico. It, They're that all, close. Works. It's all in network. It's, it's the best travel network outside of a med. I mean, of a med sub. It is that you can get outside great, of the service area. Yeah, essentially, yeah. Like and and uh, you know, if you ask, well, if they see that specialist, that's okay. Uh, in the service area, and they, they happen not to be contact. Number one, we want to know because we've got a pretty robust network. But two, it original again, original Medicare, so the Medicare Part A, Part B coinsurance would apply. So it's not like they're not covered, but it just reverts to original Medicare. So, so quick question. Th here. Chad. Th that slide's pretty foundational to, to, to understand. Yeah. Chad, unmute yourself. You raised your hand. I'm trying to unmute you, but go ahead, Chad. You hear me now? Yep, we can hear you. Okay. Did. Yep. Chad, go ahead. No, I didn't have a question. My my um my iPad battery is about to die, so I just need to plug it in. That's why I think it muted. So oh okay. Okay. But you had a question? Nope. Okay. That's good. Uh -huh. but you're teasing them, Justin. Now we know the network. Yeah. We know about the company. Is it does anyone else have any other questions about the travel coverage? Does, does this make sense? Can we explain it well? Okay. So it's kind of like a, I don't know, if you equate it to a Medicare Advantage PPO, if they're in the service area in the network, it's all covered, but it's, it's got, you know, it's, it's even if you see a specialist in the service area, original Medicare applies, but it's got the best travel. You, you leave the service area, those in-network benefits apply. Correct. 
appropriate. Medicare allows us to do yeah. that because they keep Medicare. We co we'll coordinate with them. And Tom so. Medica, as you know, has a sheet that shows all of this. It's very good to take to show your clients. It's an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Yeah. <clears throat> I go which way? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Go ahead. <clears throat> Thanks. Uh, so let's look, let's look at these benefits uh, on the on the four different cost options that we have. So four different plans: standard, thrift, core, and premier. So three of these four, thrift, core, and premier, you can write your clients on these plans any time of the year. You can write them today, right now, for a uh, four one effective date if you want to do that. Um, I would say out of Thrift, Core, and Premier, this Premier option is by far the most popular, especially what we have here in Nebraska. It just seems to line up benefits-wise and premium-wise with what folks that are looking at alternatives to that stuff would, would want to look at. So it's $125 a month for the Premier plan. That's the same premium across the board. So kind of like how, uh, how uh, Medicare managed premiums work, these kind of work the same way. Everyone pays the same premium. And that's, that's true with the, the Premier plan. So of course, all your preventative benefits, all, all of that stuff, Pay for it 100%. Um, Part B drugs, they're going to be 20%. So that's something to to be aware of when you're discussing this plan with with a client that uh, you know is on Remicade or they have uh, maybe they're a cancer patient chemotherapy. Any of those injectable drugs, client's responsibility is 20%, and Medicus cost plan is paying 80% of that cost. Now, 20% that they pay that would go into the out of pocket max, which is we talked about it earlier a little bit, but it's three thousand dollars. Yeah. So you're saying, even though like a five thousand or six thousand RA infusion drug done in a doctor's office will go towards max that one. Yep, they'll pay twenty percent in that particular scenario. We'll, we'll calculate, you know, on the back end, they're twenty percent they're paying, and then it'll stop at the three thousand. Yep. So pretty, pretty, pretty low, pretty, pretty solid maximum out of pocket. I feel like one hundred twenty-five dollars a month for the premium. This is the big one here for me, $100 per stay for the inpatient hospital stay. So those scenarios we were talking about before, um, one, one of your members that's in Kearney, they need to come to the med center in Omaha, or they need to come here in Bryan, or they need to go to St. E's, or whatever they need to do, $100 is going to cover that entire stay at the hospital. So an incredibly excellent benefit for an inpatient stay, you know, that's $50,000 for two or three days. They're going to pay the hundred dollars per state for that. And medic is going to pick up the rest of that along with Medicare. So, um, probably my, my favorite benefit on there from a peace of mind perspective, because of course, we know as we're having those conversations with folks about the what ifs and the worst case scenarios, that's something that's, that's really important. Also, skilled nursing facility coverage. So, any kind of rehabilitative services, maybe they have to go to Madonna for some kind of rehabilitative service or something like that. Days uh, one through 20, they don't pay anything for that, you know, because that falls in line with what Part A does. Days 21 and beyond, it's just $25 a day in that, in that rehab facility. That's so I, have a, I have a question, like on yeah. the prescription. So what if they decide to keep their own prescription drug? Then yeah. would they have both coverages or would they just? Yeah, so they, they actually would keep their own Part D. Okay. And th this plan, these plans won't do anything to cover Part D at all. Okay. So if you've got a med sub client today and uh -huh. you've got Part D with whoever. Right. Um, you just you can keep them there and uh -huh. move the next AEP if their you know needs change or if a better plan comes into market. But you would keep them the same the drug plan today only in the hospital. Oh, that's only in the in, hospital. that's only in the hospital or, or injectable drugs like an outpatient office right. like we were talking about. <laughs> you know, one of your problems we're having now is we're seeing that outpatient surgical a lot of doctors' offices in small towns are turning into outpatient surgical centers. Mm. So you have to be careful because it depends on how that doctor's office will code it. Yeah. If they're coding that visit as an outpatient surgical office visit to get their Part B infusion done, that's a different story. So we have to watch that because mm -hmm. it's happened in a couple of instances that I know, um, both personally and professionally. So I mean, that's just something that they have to do because now that's what Brian is doing across the state of Nebraska is turning all their small doctor's offices into outpatient surgical centers so they can feel collectively different. Mm -hmm. So they get the 295 yeah. on an MA plan or yeah. on an outpatient, which is yeah, this one we, we pay them in full, yeah, right? So, pay them in full mm -hmm. when the cost plan is different. So, and I think that's an important point. And you know, you look at, I mean, the, the B drug. It is, you know, if you, if you, we want to educate you, we want to get you comfortable with this. So I, I, I would tend to look at this as 
what what where's the monster in the closet where where's the things i need to be aware of so i don't get embarrassed right premium is pretty straightforward you have clients that are on 200 300 400 dollar med set premiums so that's an easy equation the three thousand dollar max out of pocket can be scary it's hard to get to that at a hundred bucks a pop and everything you see is zeros yeah it's the b drug and your clients will know if you if you have 50 clients, you might have four or five that are on a B drug. They know that they're on it because it's expensive and they get it in the doctor's office and it's really expensive. It's in your, your med sub plans typically are going to cover that. So they don't see that. That's the trade-off for those four or five clients, but it's still covered. They pay 20% and it stops at 3000 that that so at that point even for those four or five the question is it is it the right decision for them or not to move to the cost at that point it becomes a math problem yep pay now or pay later yeah so and then you know you can add in you know the ancillary and stuff and, and all that but but that's how i would view that is where the key and so are you on a b drug yes or no you like your part d as a drug plan you keep it <laughs> low out of pockets and is your doctor and in, in, is your doctor in the network let's look it up we can answer that question you can answer those questions that's this is a this is a nice option now to, to offer so tom some quick math uh what is the cost of a b drug let's say is it two thousand let's say it's two thousand a month yeah mm -hmm. that's probably pretty good average okay so two thousand a month times twelve you're talking about twenty four thousand. Is that really twenty percent of twenty four thousand? Is that twenty per twenty percent? But it stops. It stops at three thousand. So so if they're taking that bill in the what the third month, four month, fifth month, they'll meet the three thousand. Yeah, yeah. So if yeah. you look at it like this, whatever it is, they're on the hook. If you made it even every month for two hundred fifty bucks a month. So, so 250 real, times 12 is 3,000. It's stopped there. The real agent thinking out there is that they're paying 4,000 a year for their Medicare supplement plan. This right. would be a $3,000 plan plus, plus the cost of the premium. Is that right? Yeah, you, just, you really need to look at. It's a yes. no brainer when you're up yeah. to 350. Yeah, plus yeah. there's 350, 400. Then yeah. It's, yeah, it's a no brainer. It's a no -brainer. And <laughs> if, they're over, uh, if they're over 150 or 160 or 170, and they're not on a B drug, and they want vision, hearing, dental, a gym membership, want to counter. keep their drug plan. Yeah. I mean, how many of you have clients that are that are uh, paying more than 150 bucks, and you can save them 250 yeah. bucks a month? So uh, on the on the chat, Jessica had a question. Uh, Part B drugs stop at three thousand dollars, no matter the plan or just Premier. Uh, it's just going to depend on what the out of pocket is, Jessica, for that. So it's three thousand on the Premier. Uh, the out-of-pocket is 4000 on core, it's $6,700 on thrift, and then we have a $0 option, too, in this market now, uh, standard plan. That out-of-pocket max is 4500 So, so depending on whatever that maximum out-of-pocket is. Um, so if, if I'm you know, sitting down with someone and I know up front, you know, maybe they're paying, you know, 345 bucks a month for their med sup, <clears throat> they do take an injectable drug. Probably the, the premier plan is what's going to probably make dollar sense if we're moving up to a cost plan in that scenario. So, I, go ahead. actuarially, which one is the best plan for the customer? It it really depends on. So, if you just do, it, I, I would say it depends. That that's the scientific answer. But if you look at the difference in the out of pocket here, that's fifteen hundred dollars. What's the difference in the premium? Two thousand. Fifteen hundred dollars. So you get you get a little bit more cost sharing in return. So if, if you're if you're talking to a client who really wants zero premium, it's very premium driven. And I well maybe they've seen some of the zero premium the plans. That have gone, you know, you know that we all know that's pumping up quite a bit lately. Zero dollar plans, all these extra benefits. Maybe that's something yeah. that comes comes to your table because they they want a zero dollar plan. They want to cut premium. And that's really where yeah. Medica designed the standard plan was to try to to try to fill that. So then the question I have for you is why did you create four different plans? Good question. So up until uh, the history I have up until this yeah, fall, it's actually it, yeah. It, this fall we had just these three. Um, this plan became very popular up in South Dakota, and so they brought it down. Yeah. This plan. This is a. This is a mid-range, this score is kind of a mid-range version. This here, if you look at this, go, why, why would you buy this one? 
So, and which one is selling? Ninety percent, right here. If you think about who's on a med sub plan, yeah. For me. Why would you not go? You know, similar benefits, cheaper rates, ancillary. Go there. Mm -hmm. Go right there. If you, if you want to eventually go there and you like it and you want to see some premium, go there. <laughs> this here is if you're familiar with Medicare Part D. There's kind of a national standard Part D benefit design. That's that's what this is. This is our core. This is the standard cost. Uh, design and everything's a variation off of that. For the reason stated, the most popular plan by far is that premier plan followed by this. This one's in red because we just rolled this out this fall. But it's really up to your client what you want. It, but those are the two main options. I can't see too many opportunities to where the thrift or the core plan would make more sense for somebody. I don't standard or into the, into the math here. Yeah. Uh -huh. <clears throat> in Nebraska. We know that the average person with Medicare Advantage spends three thousand three hundred sixty-six dollars for their drugs and their everything else. Yeah, and five thousand six hundred for their Plan G and the drug fund. Now, where does the Premier Plan lie within that? Within that range? It's a really good question. I don't have the answer to that right off the top. Right. Do you have my answer biggest to that? concern here is four hundred eighty dollars deductible on Part D drug plans when you have a standalone prescription drug plan. You don't have that as an advantage plans. And that's a huge savings. It's about $500 yeah. average savings. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to figure out, all right, how do I justify a $500 expense by having a standalone prescription drug plan? So that they end up, they end up in the hospital? What's that? If they end up in the hospital, they're going to pay a lot more than that on a Medicare Advantage plan. I, I mean, yeah, that's true. I, you know? I mean, if they have an outpatient surgery, they're going to. They're going yeah, to pay more. Outpatient room. surgery, yeah, yeah. Yep. So good, good questions. Yeah, it's a good question. Thought. So is it right for a hundred percent of the people? No. But it's there's a you know it, it, you need to talk to them about what they're what they're comfortable with. Now the other question I have a couple more. Sorry, I got a couple more. Uh, one of them is let's say I have somebody who has a Medicare Advantage plan, um, and then they decide to go with the Premier plan. Um, and we enroll them in a standalone prescription drug plan. Yeah. Um, with these plans, this is a commission question. Do they get full first year commission again? Or this it's just and you get first year commission once with either cost plans or advantage plans? Is that how that works? Yeah. So if you're coming from a Medicare plan to a Medicare plan, MA to cost, cost to MA, that'd be renewal. Okay. If you're coming off a of fee for service Medicare or a med sub, yeah. which is not a Medicare, then it'd be first year. Okay. So good questions. Yeah, yeah. usually. Yeah. Yeah. You get, yes. And your outpatient co pays, is that hospital co pay only, surgical center only, or does that include physician? The surgeon? Uh, physician as well. It includes physicians. Yeah, it's all in. Yep. Yeah, it's it's really your your liability comes in for part B as in boy drugs and inpatient stay, which is 100 bucks, and your skilled nursing on the medical side. So small window and you're, you're still capped at 3,000. What's your growth been in the market? Uh, it's, it's it's been uh, we've had a lot of great steady growth. Um, what four full years? Uh, I think this is a fourth year. We're at seven thousand lives in Nebraska. So if you compare us to a, a percentage wise, what is that comparably? I mean, like, are we growing at ten percent or twenty percent? Oh, I, I would see probably twenty percent. Yeah. Nebraska, it's uh, it's the dominant Medicare plan in South Dakota. Um, we just got over a hundred thousand lives for our, our book of, of our full state footprint. Yes, yeah, so we have like a hundred and one thousand total. Medicare yeah. cost members in all those states that we showed you earlier. So you can expect them to grow another twenty thousand or thirty thousand this coming year. Yeah, that's our that's our job. Yeah, that's my question for you. Can you help us with that? <laughs> can you help us with that? Yeah. We do well in the pay. I think Mike, and Joe, you guys be willing to maybe pay your commissions too if you wanted to do that. <laughs> you, guys been running, you guys been running in South Dakota for what, ten years? Yeah, it's yeah. it is really yeah. it looks that is still strong. Yeah, uh, it's not as strong as it was, but it's what a run. You don't see a Medicare supplement taking a run of 10 years or longer. Uh -huh. uh, and that's where 
we really want to put more effort yeah. into this also. Yeah. And you know, we're trying to grow in Kansas. Most of you guys are, are you. I know we got some folks from kind of the Columbus area, but in Kansas, 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 okay. Omaha, Lincoln, Greater, uh, Kearney, Lexington. Wichita. Yes. Wichita. 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 Yep. yep. Yeah. I guess my biggest pushback that I've heard and why traditional and Med Advantage have outdone the cost plans this last year was the fear of I can't go back if I have health conditions. The fear of if I go to an MA and the MAs are quasi comparable. Mm -hmm. um, but if I go to an MA, at least I know that I have that 12 months to make a decision point to go back. So, and that's been my biggest pushback yeah. of why I can't switch over to the cost plan. Now, healthier generation, all of, my, of those clients, eh, it's, a, yeah, it's still on the tip of their tongue to move. But For someone that's a little bit on the fence, maybe they had a scare in recent years, that is a huge peace of mind deal. Yeah. In, that, in that sales process, I get that. Yes. So, yeah. so you're uh, the 12 month trial period. Yep. If you're, you know, on a med sub, you got 12 months to try an MA or, or, you know, initially, does that apply to cost? We get, we get asked that question all the time. It comes Controlled down to the does. carrier. It comes down to the carrier. We don't control the, it is not a Medicare Advantage plan. So we have carriers in this state that honor the 12 month mm -hmm. rule and others that don't. We, we don't because it's a, it's a Medicare plan, but it's not an MA plan. So not all carriers would honor that 12 month rule. Well, by the way, Medica has a MedSup plan. You know, we'll take them within 12 months. Without so, underwriting? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're probably gonna get a notice that our MedSup rates, if you haven't looked at them yet, Justin's gonna talk about it. If you haven't looked at them, I look at them. They're, they're gonna get even better here. It's in up. the search engine, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's so they're even gonna get better. Yeah. yeah, we should be in a really, really good spot this summer with our MedSup rates. We should be pretty close to the top for everybody, so. That's, I, that's, yeah. a, that's a good dialogue. Is what I want to understand is what, what your questions and concerns are. And that's, we get that. Absolutely. I, you know, whether it's a Blue Cross or Mutual of Omaha, typically on the app, it'll ask, are you coming off of yeah. uh, a Medicare plan or a Medicare advantage plan? So it, it will be, I'm not going to tell you every, every plan is going to take, because they're not. It'll, it'll come down to their underwriting guidelines and how they treat the cost plan and how that app's completed when it, when it comes back in. What we've seen is most of the time the agents check that box that they're coming off of a Medicare Advantage plan, and we've yet to have a company say no. It's not a guarantee. I just had, I just had one that got put back, so that's why I was like, okay. Well, well what you bring up is a really <laughs> valid, I mean, I sold the direct for <clears throat> years ago for a number of years, and that is something that, it's a part of the equation, for sure. <clears throat> Uh, so we have a question. Is it Jamie? I don't see. Go ahead. Okay. So questions, your med sub rates are very comparable now. And uh, just said they're going to get better. My only concern is what is your average increase in other states for med subs each year? Uh, this is my biggest hurdle in selling med, med subs at the moment. Yeah. So great question. Uh, so my background is when you're when you're you know talking to somebody about meds up and you know you've got four or five different carriers and a low carrier what's one of the things you should always ask is what's that carrier's five-year rate increase here? let's get a little historical perspective on are they committed to the market so medica is relatively new surprisingly to the meds up market they've been in minnesota for a while they have little different plans up there but uh we are a year in uh to uh, Nebraska, Iowa, South Dakota, Kansas. And so when we looked at this, we took a <laughs> relatively conservative approach to pricing the product. We wanted to be competitive, but as we got into this, we were like, well, we think we can get a little bit more competitive. And trust me, because I, I talked to the actuaries, um, they are very conscious of not lowering rates and then just raising them and just kind of doing a knee jerk. So, we are committed to the market. Uh, we don't have a five-year rate increase history in Nebraska. Uh, we have a, a one-year rate increase history. So that's something that will come with time, but that's not something that I we have available other than as we build these relationships, um, we want to make sure uh, there's some trust that we're going to manage these appropriately. And just like 
our cost book of business is hundred thousand dollars for a hundred thousand members it's a pretty stable block we want to get our meds up book of business to that level as well so question yes go ahead question yeah um on the uh, cost plan does it work like a medicare advantage plan if you move out of the service area um yeah. are you guaranteed issue at that point yeah you sure are that's a really good question so you're on a cost plan and move out of the service so, area. So you yeah. go back to your original plan unless it's not available, then you're guaranteed issue. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah, it's exactly right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's a good good thing to bring up. That's, that's spot on. I had one other thing too, speaking of like enrollment periods and eligibility, that kind of that kind of thing. I wanted to talk to you all a little bit. Um, so so we showed you these four plans. These all these three, Thrift Corp Premier, they can be written year round. Standard cannot be. Um, it's Medica's rule, it's not a CMS rule, but there's a little bit of a different enrollment time frame for that. General enrollments are for a 1-1, one, one, a 2-1, or a 3-1 effective date on a standard plan. So the $0 plan only has a little bit of a different time of the year you can write it compared to the other three. So I just wanted to call that out. Unless, you, uh, unless they're turning 65 in July, right? They're yeah. retiring, leaving their group plan, they can get it just All like they the would normal SEP stuff yeah. applies. It's so just... <clears throat> To, to switch from that plan to another plan, you can only do it during the AEP. For the no, that that's the beauty is you can switch at any time from the standard plan to the premier plan. It's a pretty easy process to go online, switch your client. So um, if there's you just can't switch back to the the standard plan until January first. So you can switch from the standard anytime you want to. From yes. the standard to mm -hmm. an, another one of our cost plans. Right. Right. Which, right. We yeah. have people do that all the time. You know, so the big surgery's coming up or something's yeah. coming yeah. up that they yeah. Yeah. need surgery better. coming up and go in in July and the doctor says you're going to have a yeah. heart, uh, heart bypass. Mm -hmm. You pick up the phone, you call medic and say, um, could you change my plan to the premier plan on August 1st, please? Yeah, you call our, our broker services team. They can help you with that. You can call me. I can help you do the change from online, whatever you need to do. I'd be happy to help. And then you can move back. Yeah. So I saw I, another question here. I saw on a, uh, on your screen earlier about if you're out of the service area for three months or longer, you have to apply for something. Say somebody's wintering in Arizona or Florida, do they have to do uh, no. something? Uh, to, to let us, that, you know, so, I think there may be something in there that says if you're going to be gone more than 90 days, you should contact us to activate the extended absence option. Yeah, and what is uh, that? Uh, you know, it's it's something you can do, but does that does that change your ability to get services outside the service area? No, we just would prefer to know if if your client's going to be gone for more than 90 days. But it technically um, doesn't affect the benefits of the contract. Yeah, no, it does not affect the benefits of the contract. My couple from Crete, Nebraska, that are spending November through March in Port Isabel have never done that. I know he's never made that phone call. Yeah. And he doesn't have any trouble in Port Isabel or <clears throat> McAllen, Texas, or anything. He doesn't have any problem at all. That's good. Um, so network, uh, we've talked about a lot of these providers already, but, but up in Omaha, Methodist and Nebraska Medicine are going to be part of our network there on our cost plans so for any one of those 57 counties. They can absolutely go see any providers both here in Lincoln and, and there in Omaha. Shouldn't have any issues uh, at, at all. And there was a question earlier in the presence, so I want to come back to this, um, about visiting providers. Brian's big into this. I forget who had the question. So... We had a big contracting effort. Just to talk about, uh, we've got a really, really competitive Medicare Advantage plan, Omaha and Lincoln. If you haven't looked at it, we contracted Brian. We got the Med Center, got everybody in. But prior to that, uh, one of the things we heard is because you guys know Brian's been really expanding to Western Central or Central Nebraska. So you'd have a lot of these visiting providers, Brian providers that would go to Central Nebraska, Grand Island, Kearney. So they, they come from out here, uh, they're not contracted because they're in Lincoln, and they provide services to a cost client of ours, say, in Grand Island. And so you have a service being provided in the service area by a non-contracted provider. So when that happened, that would be treated as out of network that it revert to original Medicare. 
So that caused some abrasion last fall. I got some feedback on that. That issue, I think I'm 99% sure has all been resolved because all the Brian uh, providers, clinics, all the traveling uh, providers have all been contracted as in network. So if you receive services from a Brian, your cost member receives services from a Brian provider in Lincoln, in Crete, in Grand Island, in Kearney, in Hastings, should all be considered in network. Not a, regardless of where they're providing services because we've actually contracted with them regardless of where they're at. So uh, that's a, that's a uh, was I would say a little bit of an issue we had last year that's now been resolved. And I think that maybe goes to one of the questions about traveling providers. I'm not aware of any of them that we have an issue with now that are coming from into these service areas, so. Okay, we keep it. Yeah. As uh, you guys are as working out of the home office, um, you know, one of the biggest things that are concerns that I always have when a new carrier comes in is, are they gonna get the bugs worked out and, and how long is that? Um, in your opinion now, do you think that things, the bugs like you we were talking about have been yeah. pretty much fired out? Or, uh, I would say from a, and I'll ask anybody else who's dealt with this. You guys are better testimonials. Uh, we've definitely, uh, I think, have the network component on cost uh, working really well. I think the policy issuance piece goes well. Uh, I would say yes. And if, if anybody feels otherwise, uh, we got a trial period. I mean, there's a trial period question. There's a big smile back here. I think somebody's going to tell me I'm full of baloney here, but I, I would invite I, you guys to tell me that have written us. I'm just saying some of the biggest challenges we're seeing and working collectively together with the DOI, the American Hospital Association, is the third party filler in any network, any area, any carrier. It's the third party fillers that are in place that are causing the biggest upset. Because when your when your patient comes in and enrolls or goes to a provider's office, they usually have an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper of who they accept, right? If they're not on there or it's illustrated appropriately, then of course you're gonna have challenges within in processing. Mm -hmm. And then your second is that they are doing all of their third party carrier billing. And so a lot of that stuff gets, and I know this for a fact with Creek Medical Center, because even though they coordinate with Brian, they have a third party biller that's doing all of their billing. So two ER bills will come out, even though there should only be one. And those types of things are some of our biggest challenges to overcome, but the communication with the carriers. Is the it, it, that's a great point. And what I would say is we're, we're lucky in that um, the medical home office is back here. But the individual that runs our network contracting is in our Omaha office. Her name's Jenny Hall. If you run into those issues, please let us know. Yeah. CHI, for instance, we uh, working with CHI. You go out to St. Francis, and you know, and, and you know, you get out into Grand Island and Kearney. They have a. It's a. It's a big. It's a big health system. They have a uh, a billing vendor that runs through Pennsylvania. So we've done out, if we have any service issues with billing correctly, making sure you understand this is not a Medicare Advantage plan. If I have Medicare at St. Francis, just file with Medicare Part A. Uh, you talk to the local clinic there at St. Francis, and then you call Pennsylvania and say, okay, you guys need to understand how to do this because they look at a Medicare contract number. So these are all things we're, we've done and we're able, if you guys run into issues, let us know, and we we are not usually we can find the right levers to pull to get it resolved. So that's an excellent question. You can't get the man. Another question. Okay. That will not add up. Um, so there's another question in the chat. Yeah, I, Christy, you cannot add up to three thousand. Yeah, go ahead and read that to us. So okay. yeah, you're making the case for us that this is a selling point. Of the, the premier plan. Yeah, th thanks, Christy. So on the premier plan, $125 a month with a $3,000 out of pocket max. What all goes towards that if they have no co pays except for the $100 stay in the hospital? It is the Part B meds and infusions. Uh, you are not missing anything. Those are the contributing factors into the out of pocket max. So the question is if my client is not on a B drug, 
and you can't anticipate what's going to happen during the year. They don't go on a B drug. Is there any way they're going to hit that out of pocket? Can't. Yeah. No. So no. therapy no. visits are all going to be zero as well. Zero. Right? Yep. I can't add it up. I can't. The, now this, the skilled care we showed it a little bit earlier. It's going to be twenty five bucks a day for days twenty one up through one hundred. But other you than add that, that up, and it still don't get the three thousand. I don't B, know where that number comes it's, from. It, it's B drug. I mean, it, it is B drug. Because if you're on a B drug, you're going to hit that. We just talked about the cost. Right. You're, you're going to hit it. <clears throat> For sure. So if you're not on a B drug, that's why that's there. Because tradition, the traditional Medicare 20% coinsurance moves moves uh, into the, the cost plan. We don't. We cover it at the same rate Medicare does. Those are expensive drugs. And if you're on a B drug, you're probably going to hit that three thousand dollar out of pocket max so outside of that you're you're not you are not missing anything it is the, that's why i mentioned you really need to make sure your client are they on a b drug most of them are but the one in 20 that is you want to make sure you have that conversation with them because if they're on a med sub that's probably getting covered and they're a little insulated from that cost you move them to the cost plan and they're going to see a bill for 20 percent of that so, but no, you're not missing anything. It's very hard, if not impossible, to uh, hit that if you're if you're not uh, on a intravenous drug uh, administered in the doctor's office. Question: uh, Coverage outside the United States is it just like the Medicare up to fifty thousand or? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it should work just like how. How a, how a med sub works or like how some of the Medicare Advantage plans build, build that 50,000 in there, just like that. Yep, good question. I know that's something that'll, that'll come up. You get asked about that, you know, sometimes, so yeah. All right, we're gonna keep keep it moving. Keep here. rolling. Yeah, good questions. Are we, what is it, are we good to? Mm -hmm. We're good. Okay, all right. Uh, so let's talk about ancillary benefits a little bit here. So we went through the healthcare coverage talk to you a little bit about how uh, injectable drugs work. We talked about how Part D is separate. These are our ancillary benefits, uh, extra value benefits, as we call them, that are built into all of the cost part. Um, so dental reimbursement. You've got dental on there. On the $0 standard plan, member gets $500 a year for dental coverage. They get $300 on core. They get $400 on premier. It's a reimbursement, so there is no dental network whatsoever with this plan. Um, basically, your clients would just continue to see whichever dentist they'd like to see. They would pay for that work up front and then submit a reimbursement claim form to us, try to get them paid back in 30 days or less. And it's full coverage in terms of, in terms of what's covered. So cleanings are covered, x-rays are covered, uh, crowns, root canal, core buildups, tooth extractions, those kind of things. They're all, you're not going to see a limitation on what the plan is covering dental wise when it comes to the major types of dental work. So simple and major restorative dental work will be covered as a part of that or eligible for reimbursement, I guess is the right way to say it. But um, yeah. Do you guys know, was the people, because there was an email that Medicare hired 500 more people and now we're not going to be behind anymore. Do you know on some of these reimbursements, last fall, maybe six months ago, they were running a little behind. I had a gal turn in a dental bill and she's calling me and she's upset because they said they pay. And she called me like a month ago and mm -hmm. said, guess what? I got all my money. But it was, is that possible that six months ago they were running behind a little on paperwork? So um, I, possibly. Um, I think the goal is with the reimbursement plans, those tend to run just a little bit slower because it, it's not always a, uh, is automated a process so that's something that they're trying to that should be the exception to the rule but if um we got an email that medic had hired 500 more people and that was mostly for individual and family plans oh mm -hmm. was it they were so far behind they were totally confused last year all right because i know we got an email that they hired a bunch more help but i had some corrections on that too all right but my gal with the general university, she was complaining, yeah. hollered at me, and what's yeah. wrong with these guys? And then all of a sudden, yeah, got it. Oh. Yeah, yeah, those are the kind of things that you know we want to work with you on if they come up. That's why I'm here. I mean, I'm, I mean, I live in Omaha, but I'm in Lincoln at least once a week for work stuff or other stuff. So we're here to support you. 
Yeah, if, it, if you guys are not getting somewhere with, with the client and it's a reimbursement, whatever it is, you know, feel free to, we, we've got it the came. broker service team. Yeah. But yeah, I mean. It didn't come in a month. It no. came in like in four months. Yeah. Yeah, we, in uh, in our past lives, Tom and I worked on a different carrier's Medicare Advantage plan. We had a very similar dental reimbursement. Okay. And I would hear about that same kind of thing every so often, about 85, 90% of the time. It seems like it came out 30 or 35 days or less, which is how we want it to be, of course. So, yeah, just let us know if those kind of things. Well, it resolved. So it's. Yeah. I'm glad really she got it. I wish it wouldn't have taken four months, but I'm glad she got her, got her money, though. So uh, the eyewear is a reimbursement, too. Uh, we work with BSP, B, uh, BSP providers on that. So it's $150 uh, annual reimbursement on the standard plan. Um, 100 on the core and 200 on the premier. So I've got some, some vision coverage in there. This, this is maybe a little bit light compared to what you see with Medicare Advantage plans, the dollars. This should be pretty similar right in line with what Medicare Advantage plans are doing from the vision benefits perspective. How do those compare with some place that's been around for eight or nine years like South Dakota? Are they the same or South Dakota benefits richer? Do you know more about uh, that? Tom? You know, I, I don't quote me. These should be very similar because we just rolled out over-the-counter benefits to uh, on all of our cost plans. And uh, I, I think the amounts were similar between the states and plans. South Dakota has cost plans with and without a drug option. So there's a little bit of variability there, but um, these should be pr pretty close to what you'd see on some of those plans. And yeah, a hearing and hearing aids would be a part of that too. So 600 on standard, 400 on core and premier for the hearing aid reimbursement as well. So we wanted to uh, to make sure there was a, a pretty strong ancillary offering too for each of these plans. Question. Yeah. Um, on the uh, the fitness membership, uh, is there any way we can go on the agent portal and see what is available in our area? Sure. Um, it's that piece of it's actually not on the agent portal. Um, I looked. I couldn't find it. So if if, if you if you uh, so we use one pass for our fitness benefit for these cost plans. So okay. we use Silver Sneakers. It works very similarly. This network is actually better, though. It's actually a better offering. I used to work with Silver Sneakers for, for years with Medicare Advantage products. Um, so to, to find fitness facilities, you'll go to, you just go to Google and type in One Pass or Rally Health. It's a Rally Health uh, owned company, I believe. So One Pass or Rally Health into Google. Um, and then you can type your zip code, your city and state, and you can look for all the eligible fitness facilities in that area. So I know we have a pretty good coverage uh, on that, on our Medicare Advantage products. I've looked at that for quite a few agents already for Omaha and Lincoln Fitness Center. So um, yeah, no problem. <coughs> Back up here just a sec. Over-the-counter coverage. This over-the-counter coverage should be really, really competitive with what you see for Medicare Advantage plans. It's $75 uh, on the core plan, $50 on Premier, 25 on Standard. Those are quarterly quarterly amounts. So it should line right up with what else, hopefully with what else you're seeing from other carriers as well. All of the uh, There's a catalog for that. The only difference on this is you can't go in person. So you can't go into Walgreens or CVS or whatnot and buy the item in person. You have to order either the catalog or online for the over-the-counter. Third church, well, it says free shipping. So. Yeah, yeah, they'll ship it free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it should should be. Uh, I haven't heard any issues on, on that piece of it on the FTC from anybody, so hopefully it's working good for everyone. Uh, Amwell's 24 uh, 7 convenience care. So, you know, we all know we saw with COVID everything that happened with COVID, telehealth and, and digital type of medicine things became a pretty big deal in our world. Um, so, we partnered with Amwell for that. So, in all the cost plans, our members can use Amwell to access. Uh, online care, phone, computer, tablet, whatever you have, you need to, to talk to somebody, <clears throat> get, a, get a medicine prescribed, anything like that, and we'll take care of that for us. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Going back to, a, to one pass, um, yeah, let me know, uh, gentleman that asked the question on oh, the phone there, let me know if you have problems finding a certain fitness center, or same goes for everybody in the room here too, if I can help you find something, um, let me know, I'll be happy to help you. So there's, there's online and digital solutions with one pass two so they can get on an app look at different workouts those kind of things if they want to do that um as far as the actual physical center uh fitness centers there should be quite a few throughout nebraska way more than what i saw when i was looking at silver sneakers so i'll find that too 
<clears throat> virtual options are a part of that as well. So if uh, people want to use different apps like Daily Burn or Fitbits, that will work with the OnePass system as well. So pretty pretty nice partner for the for that side of it. We know that's an important important piece of the equation. There's a social aspect to it. Folks like to get out, do a little bit of exercise, get to chat with their other their friends in wherever town they're at or city they're at. So it's it's a nice thing to have. Uh, this this is a pretty pretty nice deal too. It's twenty four seven nurse line. Um, personal support programs, probably not something everyone's going to use that often, but when when they when there's something pretty serious going on, uh, we hear pretty good things about this program. So there's a nurse available. Uh, they answer questions about symptoms, medications, different types of health conditions, other self-care tips uh, or non-urgent medical issues. So if you got something going on that's not urgent right now, the nurses on the line are able to help our, our customers with those questions and get, get those things in order. <coughs> Yeah, so quick time check because I know we're kind of wrapping up yeah. the cost. If we can kind of, we have about a half hour to get through a couple, a little bit more good stuff. So, yeah, can I ask one more question on the cost plans before we go on? Yeah, yeah. you bet. What, what is the turnaround time? I and mean, when we get towards the end of the month, um, yeah. I don't like to cancel the, the client's yeah. supplement uh, <laughs> until I know they have their card in hand. So, what, what yeah. are we working with? I mean, we have to wait. Is it a two week turnaround time or what? No, it, it, that's a great question. Is that, is that Tom? So, I, and I agree with you, you know, with, since moving from a med sub to a cost plan, uh, we go through the, just like a Medicare Advantage plan, it goes through the Medicare accretion process. So, we have some time there. Um, you know, two weeks should be the long, the, you know, the longest. We'd like to say seven to 10 days. Uh, but if you're submitting it, you know, on February, you know, 27th for a March 1st effective date, you know, are you, are you canceling that client's med sub coverage March 1st? And if you wait until March 8th, when you find out, you call them they're like, well, we don't do a retro term. We, we've, we've run into that a little bit. I, you know, I, it, so um, I guess my, my thought would be, uh, you know, I certainly would encourage you to, to, to cancel one coverage in, in, until you have confirmation of another. But, you know, since this is a guarantee issue, um, you know, uh, maybe a way to avoid that is to try and for a, a 4 one effective date, try and submit it earlier in the month. So you've got notice and in, in time to uh, call the med sub carrier, have the client call the med sub carrier to cancel uh, for the upcoming, you know, 4 one date or 5 one date. But uh, two weeks should be should be plenty, Tom. Uh, mm -hmm. The hope would be is you're you're getting responses and it's in your broker client view. Mm -hmm. Hopefully within mm -hmm. about uh, ten days, if not sooner. Yeah. Oh, okay, can we uh, can we put an effective date more than uh, the, the the next month? I mean, can we go? Uh, you know, can I go on May first effective date now? Good, good question. Uh, no, so it needs to be submitted in the month. And this is some feedback we're giving to our enrollment team mm -hmm. needs to be submitted within the month for the first of the next month. So the earliest you could get right now would be a four one. Because on, on your on the, on the uh, online application, it gives you a choice of the, the next month or the, the month after that. I mean, you can go two months on the on your uh, online application. That option is there. It does look like that, but uh, in reality, it's more rigid than that, unfortunately. But yeah, the, the exception would be during AEP, you could take, uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> because it's AEP, you could take an app on 1016 for a 1 1 effective date. But it, 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 to answer your question, throughout the year, it would be uh, that obviously would be would be one, one thing where we're, we're looking at is giving you a longer, longer than 30 days. Uh, I think but, even if we're able to do it <clears throat> to where you had 60 days, I think that'd be pretty nice. Yeah. yeah. And it would help with that time. Yes, sir. I yeah. start to say, uh, I have found that if you have your client call the med sub company and tell them not, don't bill my bank. I said that. They'll get a quarterly statement. And they'll have the 30 day trade period. It's a good solution. So, yeah, I don't know if you heard that, Tom. Yeah, um, I did. I, I'm aware of that, but I. I typically okay. just tell people when they get their card, call me and then I'll cancel their supplement. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, any other major questions about so, cost plans? I probably need to get 
Was this helpful? I, I mean, a lot of really good questions. And I know these, you're smiling back there. I, we, we want to at least address, if we know the answer, we're going to give it to you. If it's a question or a, something you need to think about, we want to make sure everybody's aware of that. So uh, we think it's a, it's a great option. Yeah. Hey, Tom, before we go, um, in, I'm going to kind of move things along, but it's been a great discussion. Yeah. Totally. But also just want to let you know, if you're not contracted for the Medica cost plan, Oh. Uh, give us a call and we'll be happy to get you contracted. Um, <clears throat> and then, so once you do contract, um, you have to take the certifications. And Tom, I'll let you go from there. Yeah, yes, it's, it is. I mentioned it's a Medicare plan. So, just like Medicare Advantage, if you're going to offer Medicare Advantage or a Part D plan, you do need to be certified. So, if you're going to write one for a 401 date, you need the current 2022 certification. Uh, and then we take AHIP, we take you know all the, but then you need to get the uh, Medica specific training, and it, it's it's per, it's pretty easy. Uh, so get cert if you're not certified, get certified today, and then uh, you know we'll 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 do it. It'll be easier when you do it in the fall for one one twenty three. And if you have again, if you have any questions, uh, give me a call. We'll be happy to help you out. Or Peyton, uh, we'll be happy to help you walk through that process as well too, because we have a job aid. That goes through exactly what Tom says, and I can email that to you as well, too, and we can get you going. So, anyway, I'll let you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we just want to spend a little bit of time to talk about Medicare supplement plans. Um, we have four, four letters that we offer in the Medicare supplement world A, F, for those that still qualify, G, and N. So, um, Tom had talked about this a little bit earlier. We're, we're, uh, you know, we're, we're a little bit newer into the Medicare supplement game with Medica. That being said, there's some pretty exciting changes coming. We've got some really competitive rate changes that are, that are coming down the line here. Um, other than that, I mean, we all know MedSubs. MedSubs benefits-wise, there isn't a whole lot to get into and talk about there from a network or from a, you know, a, a different, uh, different benefits perspective. Um, do you have any questions for me about MedSub? I mean, it's definitely a piece of our equation. We probably, we want, we're not gonna spend nearly as much time talking about this as we just did on the cost plans, but I just wanna let you know it's out there. It's an option we have for you. Um, I think it's a stable, secure product. We're going to have some competitive rates coming. I don't know if there's anything else for you to add. Okay. You good, Todd? Yeah, we're good. And okay. our rates are, are on the, our quoting tool on our website yep. too. So thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. There are four different ways that your clients can pay for their med sub premiums with uh, us at Medica, monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, or annually. Um, we do have a household discount as well. It's 12%. So the rule for that is uh, you have to live with someone for the last 12 months who's 60 or older with whom you reside with and either married or have a civil union partnership with. If that's the case, the household discount is 12%. Pretty competitive household discount. But I know another carrier too has something a little bit higher than that, but 12% should be pretty, pretty close to in line with what you're seeing for household discounts. So that's literally all I had for med stuff. Then we go right into Medicare Advantage, unless anybody had any other questions. I think we're good. All right. So let's talk about Medicare Advantage plans. Um, for like the better part of the past five years, that's what I've been working with mainly. Uh, used to work for a different care, focused a lot on Medicare Advantage. Uh, saw some nice growth with that, and we're, we're going to try to do the same thing here with Medica. So the Medicare Advantage plans on Medica, we're offering eight counties in eastern Nebraska, three counties in Western Iowa, that's Harrison, Mills, and Pottawatomie, Iowa over there, in case anybody dabbles over there. Um, we have two options for our Medicare Advantage plans. We have a $0 HMO plan. That's a partnership with CHI Health and Network CHI Health. That's our $0 entry. We have a $16 PPO plan that I think is as competitive as any Medicare Advantage plan you're gonna see in our piece of the state. I'll show it to you in just a second here. Yeah. I see a hole. Where do you see it? you got Butler County on Medicare Advantage. Yeah, David City, yep. And Butler and Polk County are not available on the cost plan. So Polk, you don't want to do business in Polk. Yeah. I guess we don't do business. I don't yeah. know. Oh. Maybe um, for a cost plan? It wasn't on the <laughs> cost the map. Right? It wasn't there. Butler and Polk stick out. And so I know them counting I think they, they, we added Polk for cost. Yeah. Okay. One one of twenty two. All right. It wasn't on the map. So it was Polk, Polk, Dakota, and there was one other that right. we added for one one twenty three. So <laughs> good on map. You're, 
Yep. You're on. I'm this guy. Yeah. Well, I, I just know those rural counties. Yeah, that's where you, that's where you work. That's yeah, that makes sense. It's totally. So you see where we offer. Here's here's the benefits. Uh, Sixteen dollars a month on the PPO, thirty eight hundred out of pocket max. Uh, any diagnostic CT, PET, X rays, MRIs, all those kind of things. You pay fifteen percent up to one hundred and fifty per day. It stops at one fifty per day for any of that diagnostic radiology. Um, all your preventative services, 100% paid, $35 copay on specialists. These benefits should look pretty much right in line with what some of the top Medicare Advantage plans are doing, both at Omaha and Lincoln. Um, $3,800 out of pocket max should be among the lowest out of pocket maxes that you've seen in Omaha and Lincoln for Medicare Advantage plans. Premium $16 a month should be one of the lower PPO. I know there's a couple $0 PPO options, but as far as those that have a little bit of a premium, that should be about as low as it gets for a PPO option for us here. Uh, diabetes supplies, uh, zero to 20% for that. I'll get into that more a little bit because we do have the insulin savings program on these plans. Outpatient surgery is $345. Uh, ambulance, whether uh, ground is, is $250. Your skilled nursing coverage, uh, zero dollars for the first 20 days and 184 dollars per day for days 21 through 100. Emergency room worldwide coverage is, is pretty <coughs> much what you should see from everybody else 20 percent. Part B drugs, we talked about a lot of Part B drugs with cost plans 20 percent on, on the Medicare Advantage plans, of course, too. 325 per day for inpatient hospital. I know you all look at these all the time for a lot of carriers, so I don't want to spend too much time up on this, but any questions about what you're seeing from the benefits up here or, yeah. Yeah, what are your out-of-network comparisons? <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the out-of-network, um, I don't think I have a slide on that here, do I, Tom, for out-of-network? No, I don't think we have it on I, I can um, send you the evidence, the EOC, though, um, after, right after this. You haven't? I, I don't have it memorized, but it's, it's pretty competitive. There's some co-pays and some co-insurance, but it's, it's yeah. Uh, if we have a few minutes afterwards, yeah. I'll hop online. I'll pull up the EOC and show it to you. Yeah. Sorry, I don't have it on here. Uh, network's going to be strong for the PPO. So all the, all the major partners we talked about for on the cost plan, we're going to see something real similar for Medicare Advantage. Um, yeah, that's, that's a good point. I'll bring up the out-of-network benefits for you. Part D coverage, these are both the HMO and the PPO options, they're MAPD plans. So we have you know, kind of a straightforward five-tier formulary for Part D. No deductible on the PPO plan. There is a, de uh, a deductible that applies for only tier four and five drugs on the HMO. I haven't done a ton of drug searches for agents yet on this plan, but those that I have done, we've fallen in a pretty good spot. I feel like our drugs are pretty competitive in how, how they get covered on, on this plan. We do have mail order, uh, is pretty much every Medicare Advantage carrier does today. So the mail order, you pay $0 for tier one and tier two. I uh, get $10 off the preferred retail copay on tier three drugs as well. In order refills online anytime. Um, our PBM, our pharmacy partner for this uh, is Express Scripts. That's who we work with. <laughs> Insulin savings program, so $35 copay for a one month supply of select insulins. So we know that's an important piece for diabetics. So we do have that insulin savings program built into both the HMO and the PPO <laughs> contract. Uh, no Part B deductible applies through that and it works through every stage of, of someone's Part D coverage. So here in Lincoln, we have, you know, we have Brian and Network, we have Sandy's and Network on, on the PPO plan. Uh, there's a dental reimbursement as well. $1,000 per year is the dental <coughs> reimbursement on PPO, and then it's $500 per year on the HMO. Over-the-counter coverage, $75 per quarter on PPO, $50 per quarter on HMO. So you have, it should be, again, pretty, pretty competitive dental and OTC compared to what you've seen everybody else doing. I'm going to price set just enough for this, but um, 
for those of you that haven't looked at our Medicare Advantage, one of the reasons why we want to talk about cost, definitely, and, and med stuff, we're getting better there. We got a lot better on Medicare Advantage. We, we built out the network. I think our network's on par, and the benefits are on par. But who, who are you guys ranking today for Medicare Advantage? United? About United, maybe a little bit of Blue Cross, maybe. I got one of those. But um, we got asked a question last AEP. You're comfortable with United. Um, you like the benefits. Well, why? What's your value proposition? I need to, you know, I, I can explain to them who Medica is, but show me uh, what. Why should I sell Medica? What? Why is it a better value? Why are you telling me this is a better value than if we're to write on a uh, carrier like United? So we actually did go through and, and actually um, look at if you want to do nuts and bolts and look at copays and deductibles. We did a little bit of that if you're, you know, you got clients in the Omaha Lincoln Council Bluffs area and you want to uh, offer them, we would encourage you to, to take a look because we do feel we've got some areas where we're stronger. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to add up the numbers. So, yep. So, $25, uh, this is comparing our $16 PPO to what United has at their PPO, which is, is 19 bucks a month. Uh, $25 a quarter more in OTC, so $100 more per, per year annually on that. We're $25 per day less than United for inpatient hospital stay, daily copay. So $125 total less for five or more days at a hospital. Um, the MOOC's $100 lower. Our dental benefit's a little bit lower, but it's still still 1000 bucks, still four digits. So got that transportation that's, that's benefit. Their network versus a reimbursement. Right. So there's a little bit of a trade-off there. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a choice. Yeah, if you have somebody who's a, a United prospect, their dentist that they love that they've gone to for a really long time uh, is no longer in network, we're there for them. So uh, you have that slide memorized. This yeah, is your chance to, letter for letter. There you yeah. go. Um, um, that's okay. But uh, it is, it, it's a strong offering. You know, Tom and I. Uh, in our past lives, we worked on developing Medicare Advantage products. We knew the ancillary piece of it is a really big part of the equation. So I'm happy that we have $1,000 in dental on that. Um, OTC is towards the top of the list. Yeah, what, so else, it, what else it, are you all thinking about? It adds though? up to maybe a few hundred bucks a, a year that they yeah. can save. Uh, so. But I mean, what else do you, when it comes to Medicare Advantage plans, those of you that work a lot with it today, you know, what's, what's most important to you? Is it, is it having somebody that you can reach out to locally? You just need to make sure the applications work smooth on the website. What, uh, what are you thinking? Surprise bills. Yeah. That's the, that's the key. You can yeah. get rid of your surprise bills when you have somebody. Mm -hmm. And you can say, well, in network, out of network, it's the same cost. You need to go to Mayo Clinic, you can go there. Flexibility, ease of use. Yeah. Those are, those are the real kickers, whether it's the you over-the-counter know, benefit, is it easy to use or, or is it difficult, you know? Um, is it, uh, you know, are this, the, the premium savings similar? That's great, then what, what's easy to use? Because that's really, you know, and the surprise bills, that's really what's going to sell yeah. somebody mm -hmm. is, is it easy to use? Do I have? Problems with claims, do I have problems with certifications or authorization? Yeah. So, you know, if I can get rid of those because that's really, you know, can I get certifications on a timely basis? Mm -hmm. That's another one. I mean, it's one of the reasons why I don't do work with certain carriers because they can't get their authorizations on a timely basis. You know? Yeah. Um, and I get phone calls over and over. Yeah, and we, we know, I mean, I know that's, you know what I'm talking about. well, that's the last thing that you want to have to deal with, though. You obviously, you all, your livelihood is taking care of your people. I understand that totally, but you want to be able to take care of them in the most efficient way possible. Yeah. You don't want to have seven phone calls about something that and, should just take one or and two. You don't want to have to rewrite a whole book of business. Yeah. Which I've done. Sure. I mean, like Banker's Fidelity. Yeah. Yeah. Not that you're, 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 holy smokes yeah we have a transportation benefit the only only other two little things i wanted to touch on real quick for the medicare advantage plan uh we have a transportation benefit which is 12 free rides per year from the pharmacy or doctor's office to to the member's home back and forth uh, 
there's a meals program too. So following a surgery or getting a discharge from the hospital, let's say, a lot of members are eligible for this meals program. It provides two meals per day for the seven days after a hospital or a skilled nursing, uh, skilled facility stay. So, um, and we're a little bit cheaper. We're three bucks a month cheaper. So 36 bucks a year, every dollar adds up, of course. So that, that's something there too. So like Tom said earlier, it's $200 under the total package if you add every kind of angle up of the benefits. So I want to put, we want to put this together for you just to show you that, you know, we're looking at the numbers all the time. We see what the carriers are doing. UHC in our market, Oman Lincoln, uh, has the, by far, the, uh, the predominant enrollment when it comes to Medicare management benefits wise. We're right here with them. And you got us here and our job is to support you. I don't think UHC can have somebody can come to you and see as frequently as I can. I know they can. So that's what we're here to do is help you and support you. That's all we, we had. We got a sleep bag for you if it's all right with Mike. You just, yeah. you can just sleep right here. And, yeah. yeah. Is that, yeah, right? Sure is that right? Sure right? Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. <clears throat> so. So you want to ask for any questions? Yeah. Any questions for anybody online? First of all, thanks everybody for yeah. the time. You. Appreciate your all time. Um, I hope that this was helpful for you today. And let's reach out with each other and try to connect. Thanks to Todd and Mike and everybody here. So, okay. Thanks for everyone online. Yeah, if anyone online has any questions, put it in the chat or just um, unmute yourself and just speak out loud. Also, just wanted to thank um, Medica today for providing the lunch. Um, thanks. Yes, thank for you. Lunch today. Uh, have it. If you're not contracted with Medica, give us a call. We'll get you contracted. And then also we'll send out the job aid to get you certified for the cost plan as well too and walk you through that process. So Michael, yeah. Hey, just want to say thank you to everybody. <clears throat>